Kuma fans, Charlie with the Gossiker application staff. We got another tip for you. It's a scorcher outside, so why don't we come into the air conditioned office and study up on how we can make the left spindle and the right spindle orient for clearance sake on an Akuma turning center or multitasking center, Multis, U machine, anything that's got two spindles, this process is going to help us out. Now, if we have features that we're machining on the left spindle, and they need to be clocked to features that are going to be machined on the right spindle, eh, we don't even have to stress on this because we have the ability to adjust our zero offset in the C value for either the left or the right spindle, and then we can just pick off the part normally. But there are circumstances where that's not possible. Let's say, for instance, we've got a situation like what you see in the graphic here. Both of my spindles have three jaw chucks on them, and it just so happens the way that they're mounted, those jaws are the same at uh, the, they're the same clocking location on both spindles. So if I were to try to reach in and grab a part, I have the opportunity to whack, smack a set of jaws together, and that's no good. So what I would need to do is to somehow orient this chuck either 60 degrees in the positive or in the negative direction so that the jaws no longer correspond with their, their buddies on the opposing spindle. The other circumstance where I may need to use this procedure I'm about to describe is if I'm machining raw hex stock on the left spindle and I need to be able to grab it by flats that are existing from the right spindle. So how the heck am I going to do that? The first thing that we want to talk about is the, um, the code to synchronize two spindles together. Everybody probably is already familiar with this, M151. That is going to lock the two spindles together and you can rotate or not rotate if that's uh, what you decide to do. But M151 ties the two spindles together. However, M151 does not care what kind of value is in your C axis offset for either spindle. That's the tailstock, Charlie. There we go. So it doesn't care whether we've got a, an offset in C for either spindle it's still going to orient to the machine zero position. So we have to figure out how in the heck to tell this guy, I want you to move off of the zero point when you're doing a pickoff. So first thing I'm going to do is in MDI, well, I got to close the door first. That was easy. Once the doors are closed, I'm going to command on the left spindle, notice that we are on left spindle over here, I'm going to command M19 to orient the spindle. When I hit cycle slam, now the main spindle is oriented in the M19 position and an M151, as we just talked about, will then move the sub spindle. So now the two are oriented together, but again, they're still not at a position that we like. So, what I'm going to do, now that I have synchronized those two spindles, I'm going to leave the machine in MDI mode so that my orientation will not be broken, but I'll touch mid auto manual, and now I can bring my W axis down to where I can visually see what the alignment is going to be when the machine is doing a pickoff. Now that I've gotten it into place, feel free to open the door at this point, and we are going to adjust this parameter. So the orientation position is found under the parameter page, and we're going to do a display change and find optional parameter first and second spindle. Once I pick that guy up, I can close the pop-up window, and I have two examples or two uh, categories here that I can adjust. The first is the second spindle orientation. In general, I don't need to change this unless for some reason I'm using M19 for the subspindle and I want it to align with what we're doing. But for the sake of the pickoff, I can leave that option, this item number one alone. But item number two, the second spindle zero offset. Your machine will probably start with 
a zero in there. So once we've done the M151 and the M19, we will compare the orientation. Now if I come over to my second spindle zero offset, and I can either set or add, I prefer add myself, and just tell it, hey, let's move 60 degrees. As soon as I hit enter on that 60 degrees, watch what happens. Isn't that cool? Now, if I still need to do some fine tuning, I can always add, oh, let's go minus five degrees. And as soon as I hit enter, there it goes. Once I have this set, I can hit reset and send the machine home and I don't have to mess with it again. We're, we're oriented now and M151 will be aligned perfectly for this particular part. Now, don't forget that you've got a value in here. Most people do forget about it and they just rock on. It really does not mean a whole hill of beans for a round part because it is still gonna use C0 when clocking features from the left and right spindle. But a value left in there can bite you in the buttocks somewhere down the road. So once you're done, I suggest well, you're done with the part, I should specify. I'll set that back to zero. So now my orientation position is back to zero and we are looking at the jaws as they're supposed to be. Hope this helps you out. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to your local Gossiger staff or look for your pocket Charlie because doggone it, he's here to help you out. Like and subscribe and you can even drop a comment and I will be happy to clarify any questions you got. Have a great one and keep cool out there.